So that's the unilateral and the bilateral. Now, you can have either one of those two inside of the other. So you could have um, an express contract that's bilateral or an express contract that's unilateral. You could have an implied contract, contract that's bilateral. I don't know if you could have an implied unilateral contract. I'd have to think about that, where only one party has to act and only I'm assuming you could, all right? So, I'm losing my mind here. Express or implied, and then bilateral or unilateral contract. A whole bunch of terms here to make sure you separate out depending on what the terms are. Now, remember the other thing I didn't bring about, but I want to talk about, this chapter is specifically about contracts in general. All right, these, so for, for instance, the unilateral contract we just discussed typically is not used in real estate. So when you answer questions on your exam, make sure that they are talking about contracts or are they talking about real estate contracts? Because they could be different. All right, for an example, signatures. I, do I need a signature to make a contract valid? The answer is no, because if it's an oral contract, the affirmation is okay. Now, do I need a signature on a real estate contract? Yes, because we work under the statute of frauds, which says it has to be in writing. So make sure on the exam or on any of the quizzes, the question they're asking you is it about a contract in general or is it about a real estate contract? Thumbs up. All right, cool. Now, here's some more terms. If we haven't thrown enough at you, there's a couple more here. A contract that has been completed is said to have been executed, meaning it's completed. Shauna, I'll wash your car today for $20, yes or no. She says, yes, once I'm done and she's paid me the $20, that oral contract, which was bilateral, has now been executed. When we list a property, that's a bilateral contract. It is express because in the uh, listing agreement, it says what the agent will do and what the seller will do. When we close the listing, i.e. sell the property, that listing contract has been executed, meaning it has been completed. All right. There is another term called executory. Executory means we are in the process or in the middle of the contract. So when you list a house and the seller signs the listing agreement, but we haven't completed the listing yet, we're still listing it for sale. That contract is in executory status meaning it's being completed. And then we bring a buyer and we close, now it's executed. So think of them as different periods in their life or the different time frame. While it's being worked on, it's executory. Once it's completed, it's called executed. Now, there's a legal term out there, do not get confused, an attorney a lot of times loves to use the words to execute. That means to sign. An attorney will say, hey, I want you to come by my office today and execute your will. What he's saying there is I want you to sign. Now, I'm not an English major. I've told you many times I'm a math major. I love numbers. But I believe the difference is one's an adverb and one's a verb to execute, they want you to sign it, not the contract has been executed. 
that means it's completed. All right. Now, on page 191 of your book, on page 191 of your book, there is a term called the validity of contracts. I want to jump to that section real quick first. A validity of contracts. If a contract has all five parts and all five parts are valid, that is called a valid contract. I hope, my hope for you guys as agents is that every contract you ever deal with is a valid contract. All five parts are in place and all five parts are valid. Now, these next two words, agents confuse all of the time. Matter of fact, I just had a discussion last night with another managing broker and had to educate him on the words he was using, even though he'd been in the business five years, all right? So the first word is called void. And a lot of times you will hear the term void contract. Technically, that's a misnomer because a void has never been a contract. Void means it is missing one of the parts. See this part? It's gone. Shauna, I'll wash your car today, yes or no? That is void because we did not even talk about consideration. Shauna, I'll wash your car, yes or no? That is a void because it has no, it didn't have all five parts in it. We didn't even talk about consideration, so it's void, meaning it has no validity, it's not enforceable, it never ever was a contract because a contract must have how many parts, everybody? Five. So if there's only four, notice this one's missing right here, it's void. It, and you'll hear people go, well, it's a void contract. Well, okay, I get what you mean, but technically it can't be void contract because it never was a contract. Now, here's the word you're gonna get confused with. Voidable, voidable. What that means is this, everybody, there are five parts. You see all five parts in the contract, but one of them is defective. So a voidable contract appears valid on the surface. But when you investigate all of the contract, one of the parts is defective. So you've got a house listed. I send you an offer over signed by the vice president of my investment company, Olivia Modulin, my daughter. You get the purchase agreement. It looks valid, right? The signature's there, it's for a legal item, it's a promise to do something, she's offered you money, it's voluntary, all five parts are there. However, Olivia is only 17 years old. So what you thought looked valid upon inspection, one of the parts is defective meaning the legal age. So that contract can be undone because it's voidable. It can be voided. Someone sends you an offer and the person who signed it has been adjudicated insane by a court of law. Therefore, their mental capacity may not fit under uh, legal, 
may not fit under that one section. Did I tell you that a couple of weeks ago we had a closing where the seller showed up drunk? I thought I told that story. We had a closing, I don't know, two or three weeks ago. The seller started celebrating way early in the morning. Showed up to the closing. The title company said, we're not closing this because we think you're inebriated. And therefore, any of the things you sign could be questioned. So we're not closing today. Come back tomorrow. Because his sufficient mental capacity may not have been there since he was inebriated. So when he signed, it may have looked valid, but somebody could have came back later and said, hey, wait a minute, dude. When David signed that, he was drunk, didn't know what he was doing. We want that sale undone. And therefore that contract could have been voidable. All right. So void, missing one of the elements completely. We don't even talk about it. Voidable looks valid, but it's defective because one of those issues is not there. Typically, this is the argument we have with the inspections, all right? I tell you, Christina, our house is a good house. It's got a good roof, and you put an offer in on it. You then have an inspection and find out the roof is 412 years old and got 19 layers on it. And you come back to me and go, hey, I want out of this contract because you lied to me to get me into the contract. Therefore, it's actually not a mutual ascension. That purchase agreement becomes voidable. That's what we argue all of the time in the inspection scenario. You told me the house was in this condition. I found out it was in this condition. I wouldn't have put an offer in if I'd have known the half roof was 412 years old with 19 layers. So therefore you misled me into this contract. I want it undone and it becomes voidable. Okay. So make sure that you guys understand the concept between void and voidable. Now a voidable contract can actually be reaffirmed. So that deal where Olivia signed and she was 17, you call me up and go, hey dude, we like the offer. However, it's not valid because I know your daughter's only 17. Do you want to sign on it and reaffirm? Yes, I can come in and make that defective part right. And then that contract could be valid. Okay. So they can reaffirm on defective parts. Now, here's an, a confusing one. The third type of contract, well, four, it's got valid, void, and voidable. You've got what's called an unenforceable contract. Unenforceable. Unenforceable, you also hear the slang term called valid between the parties means it's only valid, this contract is only valid between the two people that created the contract. Typically unenforceable contracts are oral. And have you guys ever heard of the old, he said, she said? That's what we're talking about. Shauna, I'll wash your car today for $20, yes or no? She says, yes. And then I decide, eh, I'm not going to do it. She takes me to court and the judge is going to say, this is an unenforceable contract because we have no proof. And I cannot force Raymond to wash the car. I don't care what he says. I literally could say, no, if I'm not watching it. So it's an unenforceable contract. It's only valid between Shauna and I. 
And typically, once it's completed or executed, neither party has a reason to sue anyway. This will pop up when the buyer doesn't buy the property. I had a court case several years ago where the judge looked at the buyer in this property. Buyer agreed to buy this property. The seller agreed to sell it to him. It was a POS house. We all know what a POS house is. The price was $10,000. The buyer decided not to buy. Seller took him to court. And the judge literally said to the buyer, I cannot force you to buy the property, but I can make you pay for it. And he found in favor of the seller in the amount of $10,000. And remember, I told you at the beginning of this course that we can get paid with the deal not closing, but typically we would have to go to court. This was the scenario, one of the scenarios. The judge literally said, I cannot make you buy the property. I can't force you to act, but I can make you pay for it in the form of the purchase price. Now, the guy ended up going ahead and buying it. Why? He was paying for it anyway. So they went ahead and conveyed title, but I would have gotten paid in that because the judge forced the say or forced the payment. 